Praise the Lord. Okay. Someone lift your hands and say hallelujah. All right, great. Uh, the Lord is big and powerful, very powerful. Very astounding, very amazing, very dramatic, very creative, very brilliant. The nature of God is beyond all that we can even ask or think. And in, in, uh, I love the scripture in uh, Ephesians 3.20. The Apostle Paul wrote that God will do above and beyond what we can even ask or think. In 1 Corinthians 2.9... The Bible said, you can't even imagine, yet your eye hasn't seen it, your ear hasn't heard it, nor has it entered into your heart, the great things that God's prepared for those who love him. Romans 8.28 is so powerful. It says, when all things are going on, basically, in the world, he said, I'll make all things to work together for good, not for bad. I notice people use that scripture to uh, try to placate a tragedy. You know, God makes all things work together for good. What the devil meant for evil, God made, will make happen for good. And that's true in a way. Joseph uh, said, you did the evil to me to destroy me, but God turned it for good, so thank you because he ended up being the prime minister, amen? He went from the, pa the, pit, the prison to the palace in a day when he was able to interpret the king's dream, which no one else could do. He did that by the anointing. And the Pharaoh, or the king in the day, in Genesis chapter 41, said something so powerful. He said, of all the people, in all of our provinces, there's none anointed like Joseph. So bring him here. I have use of him. But Joseph went through a process. So, he, you know, until he got to that place. So even, even though uh, he went through some terrible things, he ended up in the high place. So God will use situations to process you, to prepare you, to then promote you. Lift your hands if you got that. The process comes. First the process, then the promotion. First the price is paid, then the prize is gained. It doesn't work any other way. But God wants us to understand something, that he works in the realm of the spirit, not through our head alone, not through circumstances alone. He works inside of us, then the inside begins to be turned outside. And, think, and powerful things begin to happen. Um, I'm, rem I'm remembering many times when I've had severe, severely fierce visitations of God, of the Holy Spirit. And I don't see many people that have had that. I'll tell you, a, a visitation, a visitation from the Lord will cause you to run with a vision. If he didn't have that visitation, it can't happen. I love this the psalm. I was just reading it. Psalm 42 says something so powerful. It says, as the animal, the deer, it said, longs for the water, so my soul longs after you. There's another scripture that says, deep calls unto deep. The depth of things in the spirit call to a man, and when a man responds, God begins to take you up on your passion, and he gives you a vision. Lay your hand on yourself, say, Lord, give me your vision. I got to have it. I have to have it. Without him, what can I do? A vision will last you a lifetime. It'll help you run to the nations of the world. It'll help you run with power. And we see it too rarely. Many people don't have enough direction. You need to grow in God. You need correction. You need, your ways need to be corrected. You need adjustments. 
And then you need direction by the Holy Ghost. Without his direction, where are you going to go? Without him showing you what to do, where are you going to get to? <laughs> you go, people, you, you, you can go nowhere unless God is directing your steps. The Bible says the steps of a good man, I guess you could say a good woman also, are directed by the Lord. Say amen. amen. But it didn't say the steps of a bad man are. The steps of a good man. Right? Romans 8, 28 again, he says, that To those that are called by God, according to his purpose, the ones who love him, he will make things work together for good. Now this passion goes back, I see it, to Psalm 42. Write that down. You can read Psalm 42. I just want to quote the one verse. I can read so many verses in there. I read the whole thing. But I don't, I don't want to take time to do that. The point was, like the animal is longing and thirsting for water, so my soul, or what's in me, is longing for your presence. David said, I'm in your presence, Lord. Where can I go? Away from your presence. I can't escape it. He was totally caught up in the presence of God. You look at the Psalms, you look at the Psalms and you see how David was so passionate about serving God. The zeal of the Lord had eaten him up. There's a scripture that says, the zeal of the Lord of hosts has consumed us, your disciples. Consumed us completely. Write that down. The zeal of God must consume my life. Not for church. Hey, not for rituals or formats that we do, though patterns of systems and operations of things are good but for God himself. You know, the Lord wants to make a direct connection with you. Direct. Someone say direct. Direct me to him, him to me. Yes. Write that down. Write these words, direct connection. Now we have teachers in the body of Christ, and we need them because these are men that get revelation, that can teach and instruct us on how we should live and how we should go. Without a teacher, how can you learn? But the scripture also says that you don't always need men to teach you because the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you and teach you himself. And I think our job as leaders and teachers is to lead people to, to the Holy Ghost himself. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Right? Himself. He didn't say which church, which preacher, which representative, which organization. Although the preacher, the church, and the organizations are good if they're flowing with him and his plan. If they're listening to what he told them to do. Thank you, my brother. You're nodding your head. I like you. Keep doing that. He's going, yes, I'm, I'm listening. Good. God bless you, son. Yeah, there's a good man right there. He, he, he's like uh, directing us back to himself. And that's our job as leaders. You, you, you always want to get, as a preacher, a pastor, an evangelist, or a church person, church worker, Whatever capacity you're in, even if you're representing God in any situation, you always want to kind of step out of the way a little bit to make that, oh, I feel the anointing right now. To make, the, yes, Lord. Someone lift your hands. The power of God's falling here right now. Let your presence fill this house, Lord. Let your, your presence fill this place today. People watching online, wherever you are, oh, my God. There's a visitation coming your way. And I'm going to help you get there. See, we are the ones who have the light come to us and the light shines through us to people. And that's the real thing. It's, direct, it's a direct connection with God. What everybody needs is a visitation. The, he, the, even Jesus said, you are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its savor, it's good for nothing. It can't work. 
If the salt is like uh, void of its saltiness, whatever, it can't do anything. If the light gets shut off, it becomes darkness in a person's life, the blessing ends. The favor ends, the whole thing ends. So we have to show ourselves to God. And James said, if you want to be a teacher, you have a greater accountability. So there's a great responsibility. And uh, Paul told Timothy, he said, study to show yourself approved, a worker that doesn't need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. <laughs> one, of the, one of the best things you could do is study this Bible and read it and memorize many verses. Find the verses you like. Matthew 6.33, seek first. To, I learned this early in my Christian walk. A Christian walk. Why, why do I even call it that? My walk with God after he visited my life. You know, my family, we didn't have any Christians on either side of our family. Nobody was born again that we ever knew about in our family. Nobody. And the Lord Jesus came for me. I had a supernatural encounter with God. I didn't get saved in a church. I didn't get saved in, uh, through some religious organization or some evangelist having an evangelistic crusade. I didn't go to any of those things. I was a bodybuilder. I was an executive. And before I got into all that, I was also a rock singer. I was a lead singer in a, in a group. And uh, I was doing a lot of things, you know. And uh, the Lord decided he, he was going to come for me. And he did. I got gloriously, miraculously saved at someone's house. And I didn't go to church for another two months. But, but, but while I, I hadn't even yet gone to any church, because people said, now you're a Christian, you need to get a Bible. I said, okay, fine. And you need to go to church. I said, why? Which one? Where? Why would I go there? How do I know? You know? I, you know? And the Lord began to visit me directly. So I have this direct connection. I've had it all these years. When you have the touch of God, the hand of God come upon your life, Nothing can stop your walk. The devil can throw anything at you. Lift your hand and say, Lord, thank you, Lord, for this grace. Nothing can stop you. Say, nothing can stop me. It doesn't matter what anybody tries to do. It doesn't matter what the devil throws. He's defeated already. Praise the Lord. Put your foot down and say, the devil, this is where you are right here. What do you call him? Shaitani? Is that his name? A Shindwe. It means he's defeated forever. Step on him again. Go ahead. Oh, I like hearing the feet stomping on the floor. Yeah. He can't stop you when you're full of God. And the reason he even attacks you is because you scare, he's scared of the Holy Ghost. He's not scared of you. The devil's not scared of any human. He's only scared of the power they can carry from heaven. And the devil attacks people because we are made in his own creation, in his own image, with the apple of his eye. So if he attacks a person that God loves, he's tried to hurt God because God threw him out. You know, the devil has no hope of salvation or redemption ever. He's forever judged. He can never be saved. He can never be forgiven. He can never, uh, uh, you know, come to a, a place of redemption or change from the evil doer that he is. Never, forever, he's already judged. Forever and ever and ever for all eternity. That's why it's such a disaster for any man to end up in hell, to end up without God. But I want to tell you, if you want to do something powerful, you must get touched by the Holy Ghost. Let's lift our hands and pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the power of God coming upon people. This is the missing thing that you've been longing for. This is the missing experience that you wanted to have but didn't have enough of yet. This is what we need in the church, in Jesus' name. So us who are teachers, pastors, bishops, apostles, prophets, evangelists, whatever you want to say, teachers, 
are called to do one thing, to lead people to the light, to lead people to Him. If we're not doing that, we're not doing our job correctly. Some people have church to have their own business, you know that? In many around these parts of around here. It's like a business for them. It's like something they'll do to make something for themselves. Such a one will never be blessed by God. They'll stay in the little place where they are, and they could even end up down there later on. Jesus needs to be respected. Hello? He said uh, to these ones, they said, did, did we not preach in your name? Did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out devils in your name? Let me tell you something. Sinners in the world, they don't do any of that. They don't preach. They don't, definitely they don't prophesy. And they don't even know what a devil is. Even though they might have devils, they don't know what a devil is. Somebody that's possessed by the devil may not even know what a devil is. They don't even know what it is going on in their, in their, in, inside of them. So this is not talking about the world. This is talking to the church. So it's a very serious responsibility to be called by God. But you got to give yourself to it. Someone say, I will. I have to, someone say, I will. You have to give yourself to the Lord. You have to give yourself to his purpose, to his plan, and begin to let him touch you. Father, I thank you for a supernatural visitation coming to many people. They're going to begin to see what they have not seen before. The move of the Holy Ghost is coming in the earth. Kalabo shakahati salahaya. In new ways. And I thank you, Lord, that this is going to be, it's going to be an amazing, astounding event when people receive visitations from you. Can I tell you, if the presence of God gets on you, if the presence of God fills you, if the Holy Ghost fills you, people will know. But the purpose of it happening is not for people to know, it's for people to be touched and blessed. The anointing... <clears throat> is for you to let God pour out through you the power that brings blessing and, and direction and deliverance and miracles to people. The anointing's purpose is to pro provide what's needed for somebody else. It doesn't belong just to us. Although when you feel the anointing, you feel great. When I feel the anointing moving upon me and through me, I feel wonderful. But it wasn't just intended for me. It's to come through me to the world. That's why we need to work on our life, our character, our integrity, our pa especially our passion for God. Then God begins to answer. The hungrier you are, I mean the more passionate you are, the thirstier, the thirstier you are, like Psalm 42 said, for the power of God to touch you, that much more and more quicker the Lord will come to you. Humility, hunger, and holiness attracts heaven. Write that down. Humility, hunger, and holiness attracts heaven. Passion produces power. Write that down. Passion produces power. And the Lord wants to... Uh, really take us to higher levels. Someone say the devil is a liar. He's a stupid thief. He's really an idiot. How do you say? If you're from Meru, you say Indiot. Indiot. You know how Meru say that? If you're from Nigeria, you say Idiot. How do you say it in your language? I don't know. He's very stupid. He rebelled against God thinking he could win and God kicked him out and that was the end of him forever. Some will say the devil is finished forever. Come on, I'm, this, this should make you feel happy. He's finished. He has no hope. You should never listen to him. There's a story, Smith Wigglesworth, the great apostle of faith, 
he said the devil showed up in his house one time. And he heard some rumbling in the house. He got up out of bed. He went downstairs or something to look at the noise. And, and it's, it, the story goes to say, he, God opened his eyes and he saw the devil there. Huh? And, and Smith went, oh, it's only you. And he went back up to bed. <laughs> he didn't pray. He didn't rebuke him. He just went back to sleep. Praise the Lord. The devil is finished. Did you get that? Did you get that? Whenever you see a demon, just start to speak the blood of Jesus. He'll run away. Say, the blood of Jesus is here. The power of Jesus' name is here. The word of the Lord is here. The Holy Ghost is here. The devil will run for it. He'll run away. He can't stand up. He can't stay in the presence of God. Another thing, when God is with you very strongly, <laughs> this is, when God is with you very strongly, he'll expose everything wrong in your world. Don't take it as an offense, take it as a blessing. Poke the bear, as they say. Poke things, provoke things to see what happens, what comes out. You want to know somebody? Have a, have a little confrontation with them and you see how they are. And then let, let people expose themselves. Let people show you who they really are. And when someone shows you who they are, believe them, because that's real. Don't overlook it. When you see signs of something uh, about a person that's a, an issue or a problem, take the direction of that and move forward. You want the best people in your life. Someone lift your hand and say, I need the best people in my life. Without good help, what are you going to do also? So you need God first, right? I want to stay there. I, I don't want to go too much into other things. But God will also anoint people to walk with you, to work with you, to help you. Yes. And if there's a problem with them, they can't do it. Find out early. Never start to commune with someone, and then you find out that they have all these other issues. See the signs early and know and say, next, next, next. You can do that. You know why? Because there's 8 billion people on the planet. How many millions of people are in the city here? Millions and millions of people. So if something doesn't work out with somebody, fine. There's somebody else. Clap your hands and say, there's somebody else. There's somebody else. In fact, in fact, what you thought was so great that you were longing for, if God replaces that situation, he'll bring you an even better one. Clap again. Oh, yeah. I'm clapping myself because I'm happy about it. Yeah, let God sh prove everybody around you. Let God test everyone. Also, if he's going to use you, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. If God's going to use you, he'll test you first. So I, like, I just want to have a big, great thing right now. You can't handle it yet. You got to grow. God works in starting out in small ways. He takes you from a place to the next place to the next place to the next place, from glory to glory, from faith to faith. You begin to rise as you get stronger from the last thing that you just did. God doesn't take a child and put him here. You know, some people in the world can become very famous when they're young and have a gift and get pr promoted and their character, whatever, they're not developed enough. They can't handle that, that power and then you see they end up shipwrecked later on. It's the same in ministry. Let's say you have a person that becomes a, uh, an artist in the world and they get like millions of dollars contract when they're young and then they go do drugs or whatever. They end up dead somewhere, yeah? They couldn't, they couldn't handle that level of fame and fortune. Fame and fortune will come, but it'll come to someone who's ready for it. Lift your hand and say, Lord, make me ready and do it quick. I, I, I don't believe in long-term things all the time, so I'm not saying that. Someone says, oh, yeah, 
God has to test my character for 20 years. Why 20 years? Why not two years? Lift your hand and say, Lord, please let the process be speeded up. I don't have all day. <laughs> I don't have, how much time do we have? The clock is ticking. So I'm into quick things. I want to see things happen quick. And one thing that the Holy Ghost will do, in reference to his calling in your life, he'll, he'll accelerate the process. Let me tell you something. Some people took a long time to get to a certain place, and that's wonderful that they got there. But not everybody has to take so long. Say, Lord, let it be me. It doesn't have to take so long. When you're ready, God's already ready. You know the scripture says in Isaiah 60, 22. Write that down, 60, 22. Isaiah 60, verse 22. It says, a little one will become like a thousand. How many know that's, that's multiplication? And a small one will become like a strong nation. <laughs> I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. Some people erroneously use that scripture. Let me correct some error right now. They say, well, God has a timing, you know, in God's time. They, they, they paraphrase that scripture and they say, well, in God's time, the good things will happen. Nonsense. It didn't say that. We need to read it again. Hello. Read the verse. Read what it says. Don't try to make it say something it didn't say. It says, I will hasten everything to perform it in its time. I'm going to explain to you what that means. When you become ready, God was already ready. Yes or yes? Yes or yes? I didn't give you the no option because it's not, it's, not, it's not accurate. Yes or yes? Say yes. God can never be accused of never being ready. He's all-powerful. He's all-seeing. He's all-knowing. All he's omniscient. He's omnipresent, meaning he's omniscient means he's all-seeing. Omnipotent means he's all-powerful. Omnipresent means he could be everywhere at the same time. You know, if the Holy Spirit shows, <laughs> the amazing thing about God, the Holy Spirit could show up somewhere and be with me somewhere, and it could be with someone else at the same time across the planet Earth. And it could be with other people in different places all at the same time. How does that work? It's a supernatural thing. How does, how does the person of the Holy Spirit not be in one place at one time? That's why the devil is so limited. He can only be in one place at one time. But God can be everywhere. Lift your hands and say, God is everywhere. Everywhere. Lift your hands like this say, God is everywhere. at the same time. So acceleration comes when you get ready. Write that down. Write this down. It's revelation I'm telling you. God performs things when I am ready, not before, not after, but just when. He was never the one that had a special timing. So you mean to say, People that talk like this, they say, I, I want to ask a question. So you mean he wanted to do it on October 5th instead of April 4th? Huh? Are you kidding me? He was already ready. He's waiting on us. When I, we think we're waiting on the Lord like he's waiting to do something. He's already ready. When you get ready, you'll see astounding miracles. Father, I pray for every person that they can get themselves ready. They can stop waiting for things. And I want to say this, start when you're young. Start when you're young. Don't wait till you're an old man. Don't wait till you're an old woman. Do everything now. Everything you can do now, do it. Get into it. Don't be afraid to take this step. Write this down, I must do it now.
I must do all I can right now. To endlessly wait is foolishness. We need to apply ourselves passionately to the purposes of God and trust them for a personal visitation. You know, the scripture says his eyes go to and fro over the whole world looking for someone whose heart is perfect toward him. God will pass over millions of people and stop at, your, at, stop at you and come upon you. I'll give you a scriptural example of that. Mary, who was the mother of Jesus. She was a young girl in the midst of all of Israel. There were thousands of young girls her age, and I'm sure some that were nice people. But only Mary got visited. And when the angel Gabriel came to her and said, what was going to happen, thou shalt give birth to a son. He was preparing her to know that she would get pregnant without knowing a man. And she said, how can this be, back to the angels, seeing I know not a man? He said, the Holy Spirit himself will overshadow you and this will happen. No, this will happen. The messenger angel Gabriel was sent to tell her about what was going to happen. You know what she said? She didn't say, get out of here, you're crazy. She didn't say that. She would have disqualified herself. Watch people that want to accuse you all the time of something that's not even there. Something is in their heart that's wrong. There's a wound, there's a, there's a problem there. They want, to, they want to tell you things, you know, they want to talk to you roughly. They want to accuse you of something. And it's not even real. You know your own heart before God. Mary knew. She said, so she, she said back to the angel, uh, be it unto me according to the word. Be it unto me according to thy word. Wow. Right then, the deal was sealed. She was going to be the mother of the Savior to give birth to the Son of God. She's, she qualified herself by her heart attitude. So in life, if you want to quarrel with people, that's being very, very misguided. You're misguided. You're missing it. Quarrel with yourself. Quarrel to build more faith inside of yourself. Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. He didn't say fight with people. <laughs> and he didn't say fight with the devil. The devil's already defeated. People are how they are. Whatever. Fight with yourself to get yourself ready. And building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Jude chapter 20 said so powerfully. Yeah. Jude chapter 20 said so powerfully. You build yourself up in your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. By praying in what? The Holy Ghost meaning speaking in tongues, getting in the spirit. The answer for your breakthrough is in the realm of the spirit, not in the realm of the natural. So stop wrestling with people. Stop trusting in man so much, because Jeremiah said, very, very vicious scripture that sometimes we don't even like to hear. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Our trust needs to be in God. Our trust needs to be in Jehovah God. Lift your hands right now and say, Lord, my trust will be in you, not in anybody. What I need, what I want, you will give it to me. Man, I feel the anointing right now on this. The, what I need, what I want, what I need for your work, what I need for my life, you have it all, and I claim it from you. My heart is to serve you. My heart is toward you. It's not toward uh, receiving everything from situations in the natural, but I believe in the realm of the spirit, things are coming forth. You will cause men to work for my good. You will cause women to work for my good. You will cause people to bring things to me that I need, ha that I have need of. Supernaturally, they'll just show up. Why? Because I'm about your business. There needs to be provision for the vision. And Lord, I thank you right now. 
that every wrong connection, every misconnection is being taken out of the way and you have the best of the best of the best for us. The best people, the best resources, the best houses, the best lands, the best operations, the best buildings, the best friends, the most favor, a thousand times more, a thousand times more favor, a thousand times more friends, a thousand times more of every good thing. Like it said in Isaiah 60, 22, also in uh, uh, Deuteronomy 1, 11, said, I'll make you a thousand times more than you are. Isaiah 60, 22 again said, a little one will become like a thousand. A small one, even like a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. In other words, it wasn't God's time and it wasn't your time alone. It wasn't just your guess or maybe he had some special calendar day on a certain month of the year or next year or whatever. No, it means it. When it is ready, when you are ready, God was already there. Somebody say hallelujah. Let's stand on our feet right now. Lift your hands to the boss and say, Lord, I got to stop fooling around with time and my, uh, my, my, uh, my life with you and get serious about your business, Father. When I do that, things will begin to change. You could be anywhere on the earth, in the worst place or the best place or in between. If God comes to visit you, my friend, you will see tangible miracles, manifestations of things you've only just dreamed about, they will come. And I, and I prophesy that they're coming. They're coming, they're coming from everywhere. When we're right, when we're ready, things are ready. They're already there and they'll come to us in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV, God bless you. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.